We're glad to know you're still there. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to look at the headlines on our national dailies. And we're glad to be joined by our public affairs analyst, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Nya Etok. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. I always have it, you know, my lips always shake. I want to call you chief. Maybe that's what I should be calling you, Chief Ezekiel <laughs> Okay. Well, um, there are two things. The title is good. I actually hold about the highest title, which is Otue Kong, which is like Ariel Naka Kampo, which is like General. Wow. But I, I like the um, the architect because I worked for it, man, six years of <laughs> hard labor. <laughs> so the, the acquired version of uh, Ariel Naka Kampo, you hold that title. Kong, yes. That is, that is. Of when you people. said highest title, I was thinking only of Akbarawa. Akbarawa. <laughs> <laughs> because that's for the young people. That's but you, the... you look young, sir. You look young. <laughs> so now we're starting. We're well, start... I'm be 60. Oh, well, it's still young. You're 60 <laughs> years young. Okay, well, um, if you had won the election, or if you win your case in the tribunal, if it's still going on, uh, because the last time you just told us that uh, it was struck off because you didn't file, you didn't pay the monies that you were supposed to pay, and they just removed it. No, we paid all. No, that we paid all the, the amount they wanted. Mm. One million security deposit. They yeah. came on and said, "I shouldn't have paid one million. I should have paid ten they, million." I oh. said, "Okay, I'll pay." They said, "No, too late." They struck it off. So we now went on appeal, which we are going to win. Okay. Well, if you win, that means that you are going. Your salary will now be increased to one hundred and fourteen percent. I'll say this. I'll say this on national television that I'll be the first person to kick against that and say, "I will not be on salary." Interesting. Because you know, you know, there's so much. Let me tell you something. It just pains me the hypocrisy that we have in a Kwaibom state. The governor is entitled to what they call security vote yeah. every month that is over 2 billion naira. Every month, security vote. You understand me? Please, what do you use that money for? And you don't account to anybody. Yeah. Second. Yeah, but now I'm saying this because... Because there is this um, from the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission that they have said public office holders, judges, the president, governors, and the likes will have their salaries increased by 114 percent. So I'm, I'm just uh, picking your thoughts there. Because even if you say, even if you say that you are not going to be on salary, uh, what if this becomes a reality? What are your thoughts about what the RMAFC is saying? Two things. The first is that the concept of emotional intelligence is lacking in our public sector. The Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. This is a time that Nigerians are suffering. And we fail to understand the essence, the matching order, the fundamental of government which is clearly captured in the Constitution, Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B. It states that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. That couldn't have been better put. The security and welfare of who? The people. people. And it doesn't take rocket science for you to understand who the people are, which is the generality of the people. They says shall, and legal parlance, shall is stronger than must. Once you say it shall, it is something you don't debate, you don't contest, it is, it is mandatory, it is obligatory. Be the primary. Primary means the fundamental, the foundational purpose of government. If you just read that, then why is it that the welfare of the public office holders that we have been complaining over time that is too much? You know, before we came on air, I, I, I was listening to your analysis. Look at the what they get. For instance, housing allowance, take what you said, which is very correct. Now, on the average, it's going to be about 50 million. What do you... Do we live in space? I, I know that they may... 
50 million means that the senators may take 60 and then the House of Reps may take 40. But I ask you, I live in Abuja and I live in a very, 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 very comfortable accommodation befitting of any senator. And I know that that property has a certain cost range that is less than half. Okay, you must live in Asokoro, you must live in Maitama, even at that. I'm a property person. Are you buying the property? What is the understanding? Then you still have, like you said, newspaper allowance. Who is reading newspaper? Wardrobe allowance? All those things. Did you come to this place not having what to wear or something? I will say this, and I say it on national television. There's a man that I have so much respect for, and I will call his name because he will not like it, but it doesn't matter. Distinguished Senator Udo Udoma. He was appointed given ministerial appointment, he turned it down twice. People say thrice, but I said I know twice during President Obama's and just time. Yaradwa came in, even the last president, knowing that he was a PDP member, still appointed him as minister. And when the channel was over, he called him back. He said, you know what he said? He said, sir, I won't be able to take it. Do you know why? Because I suspend my business and I take care of myself for four years of an administration, and I come out a poorer person. Now, that sounds ridiculous. That sounds preposterous. That sounds un 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 unbelievable. But it's a fact. That's why I called his name. You go in there to serve the people. You didn't go in there as a pauper. You go in there as somebody who has certain level of capacity. So you're not going in there for Nigerians to make you look like um, you, you never had a means of livelihood. Why should a governor? Because at today, I served as a national chairman of Young Democratic Party. I gave them one year of my life. During that one year, I took no salaries. I took no nothing. I gave and gave. And I told them I could do more than one year because that's the much I can take from my own personal you know, sacrifice. When you go to serve, do you go to serve the nation or you go to be served? So what, what um, Ramfak or whatever the revenue and uh, whatever mobilization, what they've done is just, is just it, it, they, are, they are inciting the society. And what I expect is for Mr. President to come out and say, if you're going to be my cabinet member, you're coming in for sacrifice. We're asking Nigerians to tighten their belts we must start by tightening my belt. As the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, God has blessed me. I don't want any salary. Secondly, I'm going to appoint the rest of you if you come in on the understanding that you are coming in to serve. As a result, all these jumbo packages, they are there, but you can personally decline if you accept to take half of what has been going on because I'm asking Nigerians to tighten their belt, then come on my cabinet. If you do not want to take it, then please leave it. I want people who are coming to serve. I want people who are coming to sacrifice so that at the end of the day, when I call on Nigerians to sacrifice, they will know that I'm leading from the front. And what I ask them to do is what they are going to do. That's a sort of emotional intelligence, a sort of connect that a president will make with the people. But if President um, uh, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu or Bong Tinubu signs that stuff, which from what you rightly acknowledge, they are not saying we've not done it. They are saying it's not yet accented to, yeah. which means it's already been done. Yeah. If he accents to it, I'll be very, punch. very, very disappointed. Okay. Let's stay with the Punch newspaper here right now. Um, there's a, a smaller story, the headline up there, uh, where you find DSS Combs Bowers Abuja Home extends probe to associates. Uh, so now, uh, yeah, just yesterday, some civil society organizations, a coalition of them, now were telling the president that he has to come out with a definite statement about how he's going to fight corruption, what his stance on corruption is. Because from campaigns to after he has taken the reins of power, apart from the fact that he has fired Bauer or suspended Bauer, because now we've not been told that he has been sacked, but he has suspended Bauer and now they are combing everywhere uh, that he lives, and he's, they're probing his associate as well. But he has still not made a statement about the fight against corruption. So what is your take on what is happening in the EFCC and other places and the stand of the president on the fight against corruption? I, I'll tell you one, two, three things. 
Number one is that the asserting fundamentals that should not be individual driven. They should be what you call statute of general application. One of such fundamentals is what you call the fundamental human right of everybody according to the law. That should be respected. Now, you do the crime, you do the time. We all agree. But according to prescribed, laid down fundamentals and principles of law of the federal government, what that means is that the police have, whether DSS, whether police, whether uh, whoever, EFCC, they have no right to arrest you except, number one, they have done the full investigation to establish that you have committed a crime. And if they have done that full investigation, the law allows you to or allows them to detain you for as long as maybe 24 hours or in some cases probably 48 hours and then charge to court maybe that time is for you know for them to now have personal interrogation with you and based on what they have you know add to what they have that's why you may have that extra 24 hours or 48 hours thereafter charge you to court and it ends there, they go to defend their evidence in court. And if by the end of the day, the judgment is against the person, you send the person to prison or whatever judgment that is given. But for you to carry somebody and keep, and while you are there, you now start to look for is wrong. That is one of the fundamentals, the fundamental human right of the person. Number two is, like I've said already, processes and procedures you must follow it to the letter, which is investigate, arrest, prosecute. That is the way it's got to be. And not that you investigate or no, 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 you arrest and then somebody comes in there and says, uh, what's going on? He says, oh, God, we arrest this man. No. He says, why is it? He says, be like saying gay crime. So what is the guy? We are still looking into it. <laughs> and one week after, one month after, two months after, the person is still in custody because you are extending the, 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 the investigation to now to, to, to search his house. And I mean, it, it's wrong. It's wrong. Okay. Now, I, I am in for, you, you said something about the president not saying something about fighting corruption. For a man who has been, who had this rope around his neck about corruption, right? Now, I don't care about somebody's past. You are here, you are here, you are president, you are president. The question Nigerians want to know is, are you willing to take on that sector and deal with them? Or are you willing to just leave that sector behind and do other things? Let us know where you stand so that we know what to expect. Okay. Uh, well, there is this story as well <clears throat> that uh, is on punch. Let's just take it quickly before we go to other newspapers. 2,000 vacancies open for APC faithfuls and Tinubu's allies. So as people await at the sidelines, uh, 153 agencies, parastatals, others await board members' appointments and they, another rider is don't sacrifice competence for political patronage OPS tells president. So right now, uh, Nigerians already know, and that is the worrisome thing for me, that all these jobs that are available, board membership and all that, are for APC faithful alone and Tinubu's allies. What do you feel about that? You are planning to be a governor, and let's yeah. take your own experience or, or your own dream for these kind of yeah. things. If you were to um, dissolve all the boards, what will, yeah. who will constitute the new boards? There are two things. The very first thing is that you must know that there's a difference between party and state. It's very important. That's number one. There's a difference between party and state. For instance, there are three offices on information that I would like to bring out. Number one is the Publicity Secretary of the Party, National Public, National Public Secretary of the Party. Number two is the spokesperson of Mr. President. Number three is the Minister of Information. Those three offices. 
One speaks for the party. One speaks for the president. One speaks for the nation. But what you realize that a lot of times the minister of information becomes a spokesperson for the president or for the party is wrong. Shouldn't be so. Now, the second thing is that, which is clarity of offices. The second thing is that you have what, what I, I, I'm trying to look for the simplest way to put it. You have po politics is a game of interest. And those that win must be given the latitude to serve, you know, that they are victory. By implication, if you devote 50% or 60% to your party, you must give a minimum of 20%, if not 30, to inclusivity. What that means is that within APC, I will tell you for free, there are competent people to man any of the principal offices or the parastatals or generally the MDAs. There are competent people within APC to manage these processes. So if you want to say, I don't care about inclusivity, there are enough competent people in your party. But when you now go to your party, I have no problem with, but you leave party and go for patronage, then you are going against the spirit of the constitution to which you swore to uphold. Because the constitution makes it clear that the best fitted for the office should be elected. That is why you as a president, they got the whole of Nigeria to vote for different people and whoever is like the most preferred by the people that should be the case will be the president. So we are looking for the best fitted for the office. I want to zero into one of one of the parastatals, which is Niger Delta Development Commission. If you look at that commission, which I have been very closely associated with for a very long time, appointments have been the bane of that um, uh, commission, notwithstanding the very important role it has to play. It has always been to reward people, you know, reward the leader, bring us a name. This is your person. So the person feels a responsibility to his leader that, that appointed him. So everything that is done has to be within that click of impressing his person. But if you brought a, a body like uh, maybe maybe PWC or just just bring let them profile your members, your, your, your party members, and bring Mr. President the best fit, five of them or three of them, mm. so that Mr. President chooses any of them, the person comes in knowing that he was chosen on the basis of his competence, capacity, and he beholds, he owes his allegiance to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to okay. deliver the mandate. Okay. Now, there are certain key parasitals like that, that if you just subject it to best fitted, then we'll be able to make progress. But okay. if he comes and does the usual... Taking care of the boys, they sad. Okay, uh, well, they, um, a lot of papers, may, we may not cover all of them. Let's go to Guardian. And almost every paper uh, has the story about the 114% pay rise for public officers. And, uh, and they say in the Guardian that it complicates the minimum wage negotiation. But that's not what we're talking about right now. I'm, I'm just looking at a very small headline there below. Nigeria needs state police for, to tackle insecurity, uh, says ex-agri minister. That is Aoudo Ogbe. And that's what he said. Uh, what do you say? I, I, I agree completely. And um, you see, uh, there, we, I, I once went to the World Bank with Madame Okonjo Iweala to talk about housing. And um, during that process, they said, you know what? For you to change the Land Use Act, is going to be almost an impossibility. It was at the World Bank that they said, why don't we walk around it? You understand me? Because housing has been my forte, you know? 
And I, I like that expression. Why don't we walk around it? Now, state police will be the ultimate thing. I believe in it. And even go down to, you know, the, the local government and abroad, even universities or certain institutions have their own police, so to speak, you know, so that the, 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 the national police has an, a, a kind of a superintendency over the uh, lower arms and then it just allows people to work with what they can relate to at their levels because in every like when i wanted to be governor which i'm still on mine was that every village head will be given the status of a sheriff because every village head knows every family every family they know everybody so i hold it responsible so you're not just a village head you're like the the sheriff which is my chief security officer i i, I furnish that office with certain capacities to operate that so that every every crime is local like they say every politics is local every crime is local and when you're able to put the responsibility on the people on ground then they will have to behave because no village head wants to be removed and he will come to you and say my guy you better leave my place or yeah, me and me, I don't want to get problem with you you better leave or change you know and when you do that and every community is sane it means the state will become sane that's just what it means so what am i saying if we can't have state police the current ig has said that he's going to work on community policing yeah. okay so for now until we get to the state police let us be able to give the current ig all the the, the uh, acting ig well we can just say ig because he's going to be confirmed i know that for a fact you know let's give him all that he needs to be able to start to activate that community policing which will either be so effective that we don't need state police again or it will be a foundation on which state police will rest. Mm. Is there really a marked difference between community policing and uh, state police? Let's let's just have that difference now spelled out. Yes, yes, yes. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The control of um, state police is as local as can be, but the control of community policing is hierarchy. Is on the hierarchy. You know, uh, I wanted to use the, the hierarchical. Word, the hierarchy you know something like that okay <laughs> so and and there's also the 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 the, the command and control mentality mm. you know of the police where a reports to be to reports to see or it goes up like that and you know when you have a, a decision taking uh, capacity at a lower level it makes the decision taking time to be shorter so there's there's a marked difference because the, the concept of the police and their hierarchy is going to be retained. You can't take that out. There are certain things they will not be able to do. But when you know that certain decisions can be taken at a lower level, which is where the uh, uh, um, you know the head of the of, of the state police is within the state. It doesn't go up to the region or to the national. So it, there's a marked difference on being able to, to act fast, to be able to do the budgeting, being able to do the supervisory roles. It 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 um unless they they decentralize the police mentality which is going to be difficult it will be different from state police and the control and then the government does not want to fund as it were what is they believe is not their responsibility as of today the police is being largely funded by the government but even with that they have reservations by like why am i putting in so much money when these guys don't report to me but when in a bomb for instance I know that the police is under my, my, my superintendency and uh, my control. I can afford to kit them. I can afford to give them salaries that make sense. I can afford to incentivize them. For but them you, can, to work. you can also afford to use them for your selfish gains. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where, where, let me say this. I've always asked, now the judiciary is decentralized. If they can use the judiciary, then they can as well use the police. But if the, the judiciary thing. is working as well as it is today, the police can always work. And you can't say because of one okay. or two people that don't make sense, you want to like throw away the baby with the bath water. A All time right. will come when it will be a man that makes sense. Okay. Uh, we also have that story on business day about uh, the salary increase for public servants. But they put it differently. Politicians have it unchanged as Nigerians bear reform pain. So we're still watching and politicians are waxing stronger and happier while people are uh, suffering. But we're not going but to take that because it's the same thing. Straight. Let me put this thing very straight. President Tinubu, I beg you, I tell God, beg you, throw out that thing, reverse it.
beg okay. you on behalf of Nigerian masses. All right, let me let me take this. Uh, you haven't commented on it uh, since uh, we started talking about it. Student loans uh, plans, uh, student loan plans sparks controversy in universities. Asu, Konwa, parents take different stands uh, about that. I'd like to uh, pick your mind what you think about these student loans of a thing. You know, people, Thank you. people are it really, actually, yeah, people yes, are divided it over it. Of, it was one of the things that I proposed to do as a governor because I am a beneficiary of government support through bursary. I was an indigent student and that thing helped me. But is it the same thing? Because bursary, no, but scholarship, at the and student loan. At the come, at the come. I'm, I'm talking of so whether loan or bursary is a support system for the indigent. Mm. That's, that's the foundation. Number two, we have a wrong mentality where anything from government is largest. Talk about anchor borrowers program, talk about trader money, talk about any of these things. You throw money at people, people think that it is, you know, just theirs to take and leave. So if you are coming to give a loan, you will end up seizing the certificates of Nigerians, except you have laid a foundation for this money. Number one, have you been able to talk to the people, reorientate them to know that a loan means is money that comes with preconditions on repayment? What are those preconditions? I had two governors, Governor Atta and one other governor, I will not call okay. his name, where I became the first person right. that got a shelter facility for any state government. Governor Atta was asking me, how do we repay? What are the terms and conditions? The other governor was telling me, bring the money, bring the money. At the end of the day, I told Governor Atta, because Governor Atta sent me to the other governor, I told him, I'm not going to go, because this guy is just asking me, bring the money, bring the money, while you're asking me, how, how do we repay? What am I trying to say? Number one is that, are you giving a grant? A grant is given from a loan. Mm. If it is a loan, it is, is it, have you laid the foundation for it not to become free money? Number three, can you do it incrementally? Can you look at those areas like ICT that can generate money while you are still in school? Or are you looking at entrepreneurship where you can generate money while you are still in school? Or are you looking at some of these courses that okay. these people will have to come out and look for work to do and there's no work to do? How will they repay the money? All right. And finally, at the end of the day, what sort of template have you put in place to understand who benefits it? Have you looked at the strategic educational plan of the country to make sure that you give the loan to those areas that are needed critically for now? Or is it going to be butter and bread? And how do we ensure that there's transparency and accountability? These are all the questions and they are the foundations that should have been laid before you announce there's a loan coming and raise the hopes of the people and everybody thinks they can benefit. And when you now come to see that the people cannot benefit, there's what you call you know, a failed expectation. And those failed expectations, all if right. they are not well managed, can snowball into something that uh, you didn't okay. expect just so, because you didn't do your So wrong many right. pronouncements by the pr president, so many bills signed into law. Uh, somebody said that uh, the, Mr. President has really uh, kicked the ball rolling. And I was wondering whether it is rolling onto offside or corner kick or a throw in or whatever it is, but it better be rolling towards the goalpost so that we can score a goal, not an own goal now. Well, but this is how we can, how much we can take from of the press this morning. It's always a pleasure having you, Mr. Uh, architect, architect Ezekiel Nyaito. Very important. <laughs> Six years of hard work. Yes, architect Thank Ezekiel Nyaito. Thank you so much for having, for being a you. part Thank of our show. Yeah, so we were talking with architect um, Ezekiel Nyai Tok uh, on uh, the Off the Press, which is a segment where we look at the newspapers. We'll just take a short break now. When we return, we'll be talking about the Naira. Is it falling or rising? Are we into doom or we are expecting um, uh, El Dorado in the economic or financial sector? Stay with us.